Death, disease, and tragedy spell the time frame of the population of the century-old town of Arvada, Colorado. With mining accidents and inadequate medical care, this town was indeed stained from the beginning. Still a shadow looms over the buildings built in the early 1800s. Can we bring to life within the evidence collected as proof and communication from the other side? Greed, plague, violence, and discord still resonate within these structures. We're Hops, Haunted Observations Paranormal Society. Welcome, Welcome to the investigations of the Haunted Observations Paranormal Society. Let's do it. Alright, let's go. I've been hospitalized. We have found ourselves starving for answers, just like you. We if there's anybody here with us right now, darkness. if there's anybody still behind that will like to communicate, yes. What refuses to rest, and to debunk everything else. Using only our portable equipment to capture the voices, the apparitions, and the physical activities of the paranormal. We invite you to join us and share our knowledge. Welcome to the Investigations. A place with such rich and vibrant history as Old Town Arvada. These buildings here, such as this one that was constructed in the 1850s by one of Colorado's first iconic figures by the name of Benjamin Wasworth. He found himself settling into what is now the lot of the Arvada Hair Company. This prestigious business now sits on what was the residence and the delivery stables of Benjamin Wadsworth. It has been said that the once groundskeeper died in the basement at the building site and makes himself known by moving objects, manipulating electronics, and showing himself in the form of black shadow mass. We are here to collect evidence and to check these occurrences. Welcome to the investigations of Hops. Uh, this is our Arvada Hair Company. And this is Danette, uh, January, and investigator Kayla Denning, and Greg Gardner. Um, we're here to investigate claims of which we're about to talk about. So, Danette, what what kind of uh, claims have we had in the past? Where do you want me to start? Um, just wherever start you can. From the, yeah, the, just wherever you can. The simple things that when you're downstairs and you are folding towels and you hear people walking around upstairs and you come up there and there's nobody here. Okay. Are they like heavy footsteps? Just sounds like somebody's walking. Anything specific like boot sounding or is it kind of soft? I don't know. Just walking. Is it Just nothing? Walking? Yeah. Okay. It's and that's directly hard. Or, or, well, that's actually, there's actually a basement. Here. Okay. So that would be up here. You're yeah. hearing the footsteps happening. Mm -hmm. And Michael just told me upstairs. He said he'll be up there by himself working and he'll think somebody's down here walking around and there's nobody here. Okay, so it's primarily on this floor here. Okay. Now, what kind of experiences have you had specifically? Um, I have had um, the the one thing that we, we were just trying to trying to figure out what it was was the bump in the floor. Okay. We would hear a loud bump and it would actually shake your oh, wow. shake. And we thought it was the furnace turning on or something, okay. you know, because it. Always happened early in the morning or late at night, never in the middle of the day. Hi, we're Ox. We're here at the Arvada Hair Company in Old Town, Arvada. This wonderful building was actually the stables for Benjamin Wadsworth one of the founders and originators of uh, Old Town and Colorado. So we have had many, many different claims here um, during our interview with Danette January. Um, she told us that they have had sounds of a really loud bump um, coming from above head, not on the floor, but right above them. Um, this is down in the basement area. We've had claims here 
of um, drafts. We there was an account of the hairspray bottle top getting thrown. Um, the picture falling the, down. There's the a poster stairs. falling downstairs. Um, lots of crazy stuff. Um, I guess the daughter here or the net's daughter has had uh, lots of experiences here as well. Um, so we're planning on trying to talk to her and investigate. You know what's going on with those claims to see if they match up with the evidence we collect here tonight. Um, I'm just going to give a run through of the equipment we're using just real quick. Um, this is the Brookstone Infrared Rover. Um, it will be emitting an infrared spotlight for us to um, pick up on our infrared uh, night vision camcorder and our other night vision camcorder right here, our static camcorder. Um, we also have our K2 meter. It picks up magnetic frequency and shifts in magnetic magnetic field. Um, this will allow us to communicate um, with spirits in the fashion of them touching it or coming in close proximity of it. And it'll also allow us to debunk certain areas too. Um, right here, we have our SB7 spirit box. This will sweep the AM or FM frequency bands to allow us to communicate with spirits. Um, the frequency type level. The frequency switches are about five or six per second, and if there's a consistent voice within that five or six frequency sweeps, uh, the probability and possibility of that actually happening is none. Um, so that's why we know it's paranormal that comes through like that. Um, so that's for you guys to be able to decipher on your own. And if you pick up or you hear anything that we fail to hear, by all means, email us and let us know what you heard and when you heard it. Um, we also have our digital voice recorder right up here. Um, and that will pick up everything uh, in EVP format, or EVP form, which stands for Electronic Voice Phenomena. And that allows spirits to communicate on or above the human hearing range and below the human hearing range. So that's what that's for. Um, as well as the audio on both camcorders, and the rubber here will be able to pick up the exact same uh, frequency responses. Uh, so all right, we're going to hit the lights and start this investigation. Absolutely. Okay. Right now, we are going to kick on our K2 meter um, to check for uh, electromagnetic field. We are also going to turn on our PSB7 spirit box so that way we can uh, establish if there's spirit communication through EVP. EVP, electronic voice phenomenon. It is said that spirits can communicate through digital devices above and below the human hearing range. All right. <clears throat> if, there's anybody, if there's anybody here with us, feel free to uh, come up to us and say your name. What is your name?
What was that? I'm actually going to go ahead and leave this K2 meter. I'm going to leave our K2 meter sitting in plain sight of our uh, of the static camera, so that way we can um, see if anything comes in contact. I don't know if I'm cat. Upon review, we debunk the shadow as myself breaking the IR light from the static cam directly behind us. Shadow or something. You're catching the front shadow? I don't know if I did or what it was just now. I don't know, it was like a shadow, like right over in front of me here. I'm going to, I'm going to turn off the ovulus for light sake. I'm also going to turn this off so that way it can keep us from uh, catching shadow. And we'll primarily use our PSP7 spirit box, our K2 meter, our digital recorder, our digital video recorder, and our digital voice recorder. Mm-hmm. I keep seeing something else. We both feel a cold spot in this area. Just as we're heading upstairs, we decide to pull out our K2 meter and check for anomalous magnetic fields. Okay, look at this part where the cold spot is. Here in a few seconds, Kayla feels a very localized tap by her feet. At that point, we also start getting direct intelligent responses, lighting up our K2 meter as we ask them. Did you bend your feet? Hmm. You didn't feel that tap on the ground? Can you come up to this device? Oh, thank you. Can you come up and touch this device one more time for me? Perfect. Thank you so much. Can you give us your name? Here's the enhanced audio saying it's Jason. Hey, hop. No, we are hops. We are here to hear you. Make it with you and to try to get some kind of understanding of the world and where you're at. Hey, how do you feel? Now we are getting hits on our K2 meter. Um, we're gonna, I'm going to do a little bit of a question and answer. Once for yes, twice for no. Um, yeah, just to see if we're communicating with an intelligible spirit or not. If there's... If you're here with us and you want to communicate with us, just come up to this device I'm holding in my hand. And it will light up. So make it light up once for yes and twice for no. We're just going to ask you a couple questions, okay? Is that, is that okay with you? One. Once for yes. Can you just come up and touch the light and tell me? Here twice. Twice? Because that was twice. So I'm just repositioning my hand on this. Are you 
you a male? Can you do that? Can you do that again for me? Was that once or twice? Do it again. Did you hear that? The box? Can you come up and do that one more time? Did you see it? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Was that once or twice? Once. <laughs> okay, so you're a male, obviously. Are there other spirits here? Or other entities? Can you see it? Can you see it? My name? Can you hear that? Hello? Can you say my name? What's her name? Hey. Hey. Well, hello. Don't be afraid. We're not here to hurt or bother you. Okay, well, we're going to go ahead and mm -hmm. move on upstairs. Yeah. Are you here with us right now? We just caught an unknown light anomaly come straight out of the fax machine, hesitate, and then go straight up the stairs. Are you here with us right now? Can you just come up and uh, speak to this device right here? to set the K2 meter on 
this desk over here, and hopefully we'll be able to capture uh, a response on the K2 meter. Okay, well, it's, it's picking up the ambient signal, so we're going to move it somewhere else. If you're here with us, can you hear something up there? I just heard movement on the stairs. Down in the basement, can you touch the K2 meter once? Did you notice when I asked that question that blinked once, but now it's blinking like. Now Is it blinking right now? No, it's not now. I thought blink. But when I asked her if they were down here, it blinked. And then once only, and then it started blinking like crazy. What does that light do? Is that red light? Oh, that's for. Okay. It's a motion detector. Oh, okay. It's a motion light. Oh. It's for the security. Okay. That's for making sure. Sort of if you're here with us. Can you touch that device sitting on the dry hair over there? Just to let us know you're here. We're not here to harm you or bother you. We're just here for an understanding of you. Right now we're going to roll on our PSB7 spirit box again, just so we can PSB7 spirit box so we can um, try to get the audio confirmation that there's something here. Yeah. Yeah. I found more communication right there. Emma? Yeah. Can you give me your name? Matt? Matt? Is your name Matt? Is Sims your last name?
Do you know why you're still here? this place used to be. Did you just touch Kayla? something downstairs get moved. It um, sounded like a cap get thrown or something get turned on perhaps, which was one of the claims. So uh, we're going to take a look at what it was. really old wood floors. 
kind of the wood itself is not old, but the self flooring I joists maybe are older. Those four squeaks pretty bad. So we're trying to discount any squeaking sounds. So we're taking our moments to pause and stop. Just a few minutes ago while we were upstairs we heard the we heard a male's voice downstairs. Right after right after we heard something get thrown or turned on or something. And then that's what we're looking for right now. I'm not very familiar with this, like this whole area, so I don't know what well, would have gotten thrown. You know? Yeah, you know what I think it sounded like? Yeah. I think it sounded like someone stepping on it sounded, it sounded like something turned on to me from up there and she said about her hot tools being on and I asked upstairs if they were turning on yep they're definitely on I asked upstairs they're if definitely they were on. turning on the hot tools or the blow dryer okay so these right here These right here are the uh, are the tools. Uh, one of the claims uh, that we were told about was that the curling irons and stuff uh, turn on, and we know nobody's touched these because we were. It's just me and Kayla here, and we didn't come over to this spot at all. Um, but it's on. So let me go ahead and show you that it's on. I'm going to switch this off the night vision and show you with the light, the uh, regular um, flashlights, so that way you can see that the lights are on. So you can see, if you can see that orange light, it's on, and Oh yeah, it's definitely hot to the hot around it. So I'm going to go ahead and don't even know how to turn this thing off. How do you twist it? What do you twist? Oh, oh right here, look. No, that's the lock. Yeah. Will you twist the handle? No, because it's only on. Oh, it's already. It's all the way on. Um, it's all the way on at eight. It's like all the way on. No, that right. was. It was. Well, it's on eight. So. Yeah, and let's go on the other side. Not even, is it even plugged quick? in? How weird, is it? Yeah, it has to be plugged in. I don't know. Where is that one? Where's that plugged into? Let me follow this cord. And that goes into this one? This one. Oh, right here. Right here, there's the on and off switch right here on the side. Oh, wow. See, we don't even know how to turn them on or off. We're like in a search. So, it's definitely hot. It's definitely been on for a little minute. So we're just gonna quit. We're just gonna go ahead and move all these cords off of it. That could be extremely dangerous. I hope the net doesn't get mad at us. It's mad at me for messing up records here. But that was sitting right on them. Okay, so we're gonna switch. We're gonna switch back. We're going to go, oh, wow. We're going to go ahead and switch back to night vision. Did you turn on this uh, hot station? I did. I did. I did. I did, yeah. yeah. Okay. Can you do it again? 
Yes? Go ahead and do it again. Go, go, go for it. Think. We're, we're asking you to do it this time. The battery keeps draining and regaining battery, which is crazy. I've never seen an R camcorder do that. Um, especially with it not changing, with us not changing any of the features or switching it from night vision to something else. Hmm. I'm going to go ahead and move these batteries, the, the batteries we set up, they're, they're super small batteries that we uh, wanted to try for an experiment, see if we could, uh, if the spirit could essentially pull the energy from that instead of draining our battery, but it uh, looks like it didn't work because they keep draining our camcorder battery. So, go ahead and move this back over here. George. Did you know George? Do you remember George? that this isn't how it used to be? Help you move on? would like to thank Joe January and Danette January for allowing us the amazing opportunity to investigate within their business, the Arvada Hair Company, located in the historic Old Town Arvada, right here in Colorado. Thank you for watching Hops. We hope you enjoyed this week's show. We are dedicated to bringing you new evidence of the paranormal each and every week from new haunted locations. Don't forget to check us out at our website, 
or throw us a like on Facebook, or subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Once again, thank you for watching, and remember, if you're willing to listen, the dead do speak.